Hey guys, Caitlin here, and for this week's video, I want to talk all about abdominal pain. There are many organs in this area of the body, and to separate the abdomen in certain quadrants can definitely help you in your labs and your imaging. So first, I want to get started and talk about the right upper quadrant. So the main things in the right upper quadrant are the liver and the biliary system. And first, I want to talk about biliary colic. So if your patient is having this right upper quadrant pain, it follows a meal and only lasts 30 minutes to an hour after a meal, then this is most likely biliary colic and is usually benign. But if the pain stays for more than an hour and there's associated fever and the patient looks ill, then this could possibly be cholecystitis. Cholecystitis is inflammation and infection of the gallbladder. And it's usually caused by a gallstone that gets lodged into the cystic duct blocking any bile from being released into the biliary system. A good physical exam finding for this is a Murphy sign. And a positive Murphy sign will happen when the patient feels right upper quadrant pain while you, the provider, are palpating and also why the patient is taking a deep breath. And if this is a positive, then you're gonna to wanna to get an ultrasound of the right upper quadrant looking for cholecystitis. The view that best visualizes the gallbladder is the exclamation point view. The dot in the exclamation is the portal vein and the gallbladder is the long bulbous shape to the right. This is a picture of a normal appearing gallbladder with no gallstones inside. There are a couple things you're looking for on ultrasound imaging when it comes to cholecystitis. The first one is simply looking for gallstones within the gallbladder. Here you can see a one centimeter gallstone lodged into the cystic duct. The next thing is assessing the gallbladder wall thickness. A wall thickness of greater than three millimeters is suspect for cholecystitis. Also look for possible pericolic fluid, also an indicator for inflammation. Another thing that can occur within the gallbladder are polyps. And you will want to figure out if the mass from what you are seeing is a stone or a polyp. Gallstones typically have what's called an acoustic shadow casted below them, and you can see this from the previous picture. And another thing to assess is to see if the gallstone is in fact lodged into the cystic duct. So have the patient move to see if the gallstone also moves, and if not, it's either a polyp or it's a gallstone lodged into the cystic duct, causing the patient to have the pain they are experiencing. The other organs in the right upper quadrant are the biliary tree and the liver. And with the biliary tree, you can have acute cholangitis, which will typically have the triad called Charcot's triad of right upper quadrant pain, fever, and jaundice. And if it's very bad, you can have Raynaud's pentad, which is Charcot's triad plus altered mental status and hypotension. And the last organ in the right upper quadrant we're gonna talk about is the liver. And there can be many pathologies that can occur within the liver, from anything to acute hepatitis, so maybe thinking about getting a viral hepatitis panel, or possibly a liver abscess, or Bud Chiari syndrome if the patient has a history of blood clots, or it could be Fitzhugh Curtis syndrome if they are also having pelvic pain, or if the patient has cirrhosis, they can also have a portal vein thrombosis. The next quadrant I want to talk about is the epigastric quadrant. And the most important organ to consider here is the pancreas. The most common causes of pancreatitis are alcohol use and gallstones. And the pain that you will have with pancreatitis is constant epigastric pain that goes and refers all the way to the back and in between the shoulder blades. Whenever a patient comes in with that classic type of pain, I will order a lipase. And just remember that a lipase is definitely more specific than an amylase. And if it's elevated, I'll go ahead and order a CT scan with contrast of the abdomen looking for pancreatitis. And just remember that you can have referred pain to the epigastric from a myocardial infarction or anything involving the stomach like GERD, gastritis, or peptic ulcer disease. The next quadrant I want to talk about is the left upper quadrant. And everything in this quadrant has to do with the spleen. So you can have splenomegaly from many different etiologies. You could have a splenic infarct, a splenic abscess, or even a splenic rupture that is usually involved with trauma. The last thing I wanna talk about today 
is if a patient comes in with diffuse abdominal pain or just very nonspecific abdominal pain. And one of the things that should be on your differential is acute mesenteric ischemia. And with this, you will have pain out of proportion to exam. And if the patient has a risk factor of AFib, a history of blood clots, or cocaine abuse. The next thing to consider is either a perforated small bowel or a perforated ulcer. And usually the patient will come in with peritoneal signs. And what I like to do is just shake the bed that the patient is in unexpectedly. And if they wince in pain, then I consider that positive peritoneal signs. The next thing to consider is a small bowel obstruction. And especially if the patient is vomiting and has a history of abdominal surgeries. And just remember the most common cause of a small bowel obstruction is a hegens from the previous abdominal surgeries that they've had. The next thing to consider with diffuse abdominal pain is infectious colitis. And definitely consider this with profuse diarrhea. And definitely consider C. diff if they have recent hospital stay or recent antibiotic use. Music